So this is case number five, again in the series of immigration refusals and especially misrepresentations under um, Act 40 of AIRPA Federal Court logo on the top. You are looking at, this is last year, June 28, 2018. Madam Justice Strickland, uh, the docket number citation number listed on the top right. And let's dive into the case. Let's find out what's going on. The name is Priya. Surajay Belly and Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. Let's find out what happens to this case. Just a few, just a summary here. This is an application for JR of the decision of a migration counselor with the High Commissioner of Canada Immigration Service in Sri Lanka, refusing the applicant's PR application made under the FSW class and finding that the applicant is inadmissible under Section 40. So misrepresentation again. Just take a look at a little background. What is the background of the applicant? The applicant Priya Surajabali, citizen of Mauritius, in support of her application seeking PR under FSW class as an interpreter. She provided two letters of reference. The first on the Mauritius High Commission letterhead was from a head of mission, date December 18, 2014. This letter describes the applicant's employment at the High Commission as a researcher, secretary, with proficiency as a translator interpreter okay and uh, what is the second one uh, and list of employment duties as uh, including working 35 hours a week in the translation interpretation interpretation services five hours per week as a researcher secretary duties that means more of translation less of research secretary duties in relation to applicants employment at the hotel Meher castle she submitted a November 2014 letter stating, stating that she had provided interpretation services to her hotel guest, which letter was signed by Jagdish Chandra Basin, the applicant's father-in-law. So two letters, one was signed by the hotel owner, also the father-in-law, J.C. Basin, and also the other uh, employment at the High Commission, uh, the Mauritius High Commission in New Delhi, uh, showing that she was working there and, and providing uh, translation services. So let's find out. So what does the Canadian High Commission do? Canadian government, uh, line number three. An immigration officer determined that a field investigation was required. Wow, okay. So now they don't believe the employment experience. They're, they're thinking we need to do a field investigation to find out about this employment uh, you know, information because these are material to the PR application. At the Hotel Meher Castle and as well as Telephone verification of her employment at the Mauritius High Commission in Delhi. Number four, an assessment unit anti-fraud report was prepared based on the visit to Hotel Mayor Castle. It found out due to a recent management change where most of the current hotel staff had not been employed at the hotel at the time the applicant claimed to have worked there. Okay. However, those who did remember her identified her as the owner's daughter-in-law and advised that she had not worked at the hotel and the hotel never had a translator okay here's the start of fraud and the misrep here so she never worked as far as the employee saying uh, number five a letter from the mauritius high commission was received dated uh, 2016 which states that the applicant's designation was secretary researcher and her duties were secretary to the trade advisor posted at the mauritius high commission new delhi the gcms notes indicate that in response to follow-up email the Mauritius High Commission advised for the two-year email dated September 2016 kindly note that the previous experience of Mrs. P. Surajabali is not available as per her C CV wow so they denied we don't have the experience available all right all right so now you, you know you are you are understanding what's going on here the applicant is trying to uh, you know bolster her uh, employment credentials to get the PR and both of those credentials both of those places where it's coming out after the the fraud investigation they are finding out that the employment experience is either deficient or entirely missing number six as a result the applicant was sent a letter in may 2018 in which the officer advised that she was concerned that the applicant had misrepresented her employment experience as uh, interpreter translator and at hotel mayor castle with a procedural fairness letter and they, uh, the letter said, I'm just going to read it from here. Uh, the here, the letter advised that those concerns arose from the investigation. We found the High Commission Mauritius was unable to confirm independently 
Um, and further that she was never, uh, also from here, she was never employed at the Hotel Mayor Castle, and that's a problem. So this is a procedure letter issued by the Canadian government. And then, uh, of course, there are responses, um, uh, the responses given by the, I don't want to read each and every line, but I'm just going to pick some lines to show you what exactly were, was happening. Uh, the applicant's father-in-law, the previous owner, explained that the Hotel Mayor Castle had undergone a change in management, and as such, the current management team may not have been in position to attest to applicant's employment experience and a related lease agreement for the hotel. In relation to applicant's employment, Mauritius, three additional letters from former diplomatic staff were provided. So I'm not going to read uh, through all these letters, but uh, the, the conclusion was that none of them could verify that she actually worked as a translator there, all right? So the decision under review, so this is the decision uh, uh, which is under review now. The officer denied the applic applicant's PR. The officer advised that she had concluded uh, that the applicant was inadmissible, ad in, sorry, inadmissible to Canada under subsection 41. Uh, she misrepresented and the letter state, I'm just reading the highlighted in yellow, the letter stated that this conclusion was based on investigation which found that the High Commissioner of Mauritius was unable to confirm independently that the applicant had any experience as uh, as an interpreter translator, stating that the records show that she was employed as a researcher secretary, not as an interpreter translator. Further, the applicant was never employed at Hotel Mayor Castle in any capacity. And Hotel Mayor Castle never employed. There was there was never a need to employ. So this is all misrepresentation. All right. So I'm just going to jump to some more relevant sections so that I can show you the meat of the application. So here, here's the, I'm on line 22. So here is the, the defense by the applicant. The applicant submits that there were errors made in the verification conducted at the request of the High Commission of Canada, okay? And these were compounded by an unreasonable assessment of a response to PFL. She submits that the officer preferred the evidence provided by the way of flawed on-site verification at Hotel Mary Castle and the email verification with High Commissioner Mauritius to the, to the evidence she provided in response to PFL because of unfounded credibility concerns held by the officer. Wow, okay. The applicant submits that the officer determined that the applicant's father-in-law and her supervisors at the High Commissioner Mauritius had colluded in support of a PR application by providing falsified information but provided no reason assessment or analysis in support of such finding. Neither reasons, the record, nor the Rickson affidavit presented a reasonable basis of explanation in support of this conclusion. So I think this is just uh, uh, alleging without any evidence. All right, so let's take a look uh, further below. I'm going to, going to jump to the relevant, which I want you to see. Take a look at line 26. Uh, this is... Uh, this is the assessment made by the court. I note that the risk assessment unit anti-fraud site visit report indicates that the, when the team visited the hotel, the front desk employee confirmed that he had only um, been with the hotel a few days. He could not identify a photo of the applicant and ask the investigators to wait for the owner of the hotel. Okay. However, one of the staff, look at this. However, one of the staff, yeah, I'm just going to highlight this for you. Uh, one of the staff standing at the reception recognized the photo and stated that the applicant was the previous owner's younger son's wife. Further, the family used to reside next to the hotel but had recently moved to Canada. The staff member was then asked by the front desk employee to refrain from speaking for the investigators. Okay. The current manager then attended and confirmed that the hotel had been previously owned by the applicant's father-in-law and his son, Raju Basin both of whom they had moved to Canada. So it is very likely that the, that the in-laws have moved to Canada and they were trying to bring the daughter-in-law under FSW class. I don't know why. If Raju Basin had already moved under the PR, they could have sponsored her as a spouse. Why, were, why was uh, you know the application made for on, the, on the federal skill class? It's, um, you know, if we don't have the answer. Another son had been in Canada for the past 10 years. Prior to taking on the hotel, the manager had operated a transport business. He stated that he knew the family has been in business street for many years, provided taxi service to their guests. Okay. Uh, when asked uh, here, um, yeah, yeah, when asked here, I'm just going to highlight this here. When asked if the hotel had provided the services of a translator, he stated that one was not required as most guests sp spoke English or Hindi. Yeah, there was no required. I oh, mean, I don't know why they would say, say they need translator. 
Um, when asked if the investigators could speak to any to any of the old staff, the manager advised that the only person they had spoken to earlier at the front desk and the guard remained. That's it. Everybody has moved on. And, and that's it. And uh, when shown the photographs of the applicant, he had identified as the applicant, stated that he'd never worked in hotel in any capacity and had never seen her come to the hotel. Wow. So that's the truth. This came out. Entries, number 28, entries in the GCMS notes uh, indicate concern that a small 24-room hotel would need to employ an interpreter on the full-time uh, basis. The site report also confirmed that the hotel has only 24 rooms and no conference room or office, so there was no need of an interpreter. So that's that's for the reality. Uh, the the visa officer preferred a bit, uh, no, ignoring all the testimonial and evidences on paper. The visa officer preferred the evidence of the site visit team as set out on the report. So that's what they that's what they uh, relied on, which had concluded that it appeared that the applicant had misrepresented. Here's the beat, uh, had misrepresented a work application as a translator in the hotel. This is this is this is it. Uh, so, the officer stated that she was satisfied on the balance of probabilities that the applicant was never employed at the hotel in any capacity. The representative of the material fact was related to admissibility and was an attempt to foreclose an avenue of investigation into the applicant's personal activity during that period and could have induced an error in administration of air problem. Yeah, so that's that's what it is. So, uh, hey, that's that's what it is. So, I'm just going to jump down below on something that I want you to take a look. Line number 35, while I agree with the applicant that the officer's treatment of evidence concerning employment at Jack Bishop Mauritius was unreasonable, I need not address this given my finding as the reasonableness of the material uh, misrepresentation. Uh, the officer's finding of misrep in that regard is determinative, of course it is. Was there a breach of duty of procedural fairness? I don't want to read about this. It does not matter whether the procedural fairness, I'm sure uh, they followed the procedure, but you know, um, the the addressing of the procedural fairness did not correct their, their, their position. As far as the breach of uh, PFL is concerned, uh, this is the final uh, conclusion by the judge in line number 39. In my view, the applicant knew the officer's concern and had an opportunity to respond to them, and I'm not persuaded that there was a breach of procedural fairness in these circumstances. So now, you were given a chance, you could not explain, and that's that's it. So the judgment is clear. The court's judgment is the application of JR is denied. No question of general importance proposed for the certification. Of course, there shall be no order to cost. There's no cost involved anywhere. Uh, and uh, here's the full name and the case number, docket number, IM 3929-18. Priya Surajay Bali was his Minister of Citizenship Immigration, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, the name of the judge and uh, let's take a look at if there's any lawyers written here yes uh, for the applicant Mario Di Bellissimo Tamara Thomas and for the respondent Suzanne Bruce and Bellissimo Law Group uh, listed down below on the uh, left bottom left so this is it guys uh, coming back to the original uh, starting screen what, what what do we learn? What what is what is the the case summary that we learned from this case is that if you are applying for any application in this case, if you're applying for PR application on a point system, and you are required to produce evidence of employment to claim points, and if your employment experience is fake, uh, not only employment experience but your employment itself is fake. Soon or later, you will be caught, and once you are caught, they will reject your application and also ban you under Act 40. That's 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 the thing. What we learn from here, I've seen so many cases where our clients call me and say, "Look, uh, I've been issued a procedural fairness letter. Tell me what do I do? How do I write? Is there any way to write?" And I and I ask them a simple question: Are they alleging that you you are faking your experience? And they, they are telling me, yes, my experience is not correct. My, it's not accurate. And they say, there's no, there's no way I can defend you. If your experience is not, not truthful and you are asking me to defend you, there's no way it can be defended. So you have made a mistake. You have to own up the mistake to yourself and then say, look, sorry, I made a mistake. And then be prepared for the penalty. And that's what it is. Thank you very much for your time, for listening to my case. Uh, and uh, hey, I always look forward to uh, meet many um, 
people who are in some kind of immigration refusal, if you have been res receiving a, a letter from possible misrepresentation or or any kind of refusal where you require some analysis about the law, about the Immigration Refugee Protection Act, uh, I can help you, I can research the law, I can read some few cases, I can tell you how they were dealt with in the past and what is the likelihood that your case will be going that path or not so that you can take the best course of action. I do the research so that you don't have to. I, I do the research for you and I give you a solution uh, on, you know, ready-made on a, on a plate. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, leave your comments and I always read those comments. All right. Bye-bye.